if we if we were to zoom in on this on just for just a second, and I love talking about this shit, so please, I am no expert, but if you guys have questions, ask away because I love talking about this shit. So the coolest thing about this synthesizer is that it's got four banks of sound engines. You can use, and it's got all this stuff. It's got you know low pass filter, twelve bit, uh, uh, twelve dB, twenty four dB, high pass, twenty four band pass, dual com, all these sound engines. Um, and all of these will create different sounds. And then there are two, um, I forget what they're called. Oh, they're modulator switches. So basically what you do is you have the sound, like this is a comb notch. So there's a very middle focused sound, middle waveform sound. And then, uh, the bandwidth of the comb filter is controlled on Y and the frequency of how that sound is shaped is on X. So if we were to play a note um, and move the X filter, you'd hear that that frequency, that f that feedback of what that sound is shaped and sounds like uh, is affected by the X knob there. Uh, what's this? Um, this is not FL Studio. This is Reason 8. Uh... But I doubt they discount my copy for a nursing program. <laughs> hey, you just got to find a software solution. A software solution? Uh, let me zoom back out of this because that's uh, annoying. But let me pull this up. Um, so I believe this is this one here. So... Actually, that's not this, is it? No, uh, I gotta figure out. I gotta f fix these colors. What do I have? Oh, I have this soloed. Let me solo this. So it's slight, but it's changing the frequency. And if we change the bandwidth, It changes the sound ever so slightly, and then... Okay, so actually, that's that's why you couldn't hear sound A, is because... Alright, so, let's go back. You have an A-B balance slider here. That's affecting the frequency. So this is as open as that bandwidth will be. And that's completely closed. And you can hear how that changes the sound. And so basically, the way I have the A sound is that it's just a ring tone. And then if we bring the sound B engine in... And we blend the two together so that we have that, we reach that point where you can still hear that little ring coming through, but you can still hear this detune, uh, this unison voice, which. That's really crunchy detune. We don't need to detune that much. And how many voices? So, the thing that's interesting about the, the unison. Um, sound engine is that it's basically what it sounds like it's how many voices you want to have over the over the 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 layer of sound and basically that these four windows is where you add all those sounds together to make bigger sounds using different sound engines, blending them together, using the envelopes, using the LFOs. It's a very interesting way to do things. You can't remove necessarily from the individual uh, mic uh, the samples themselves, but you can take these individual sounds, fuck with them, and then blend them together. It's Additive synthesis is really, really interesting with how much you can make things sound like, you know, like wind chimes 
or you know um organs or really organic sounds it's 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 an opposite way of thinking about synthesis from where sounds are totally focused on the completely analog and sort of robotic or you know um even video gamey but it's still it it's it's a it's a wonderful synthesizer uh and then it just blends really nicely into this song like this Douche, have a fantastic evening. Thank you for hanging out, and hope work goes smoothly for you. And whoever followed, thank you again. I'm so bad at doing this tonight. Who, who followed? Let's 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 let's. let's. Uh, let's do this. CP to, uh, CP, CP to I, I. Sorry, I'm butchering that terribly. I'm gonna assume that's Keptoy. Uh, J Ken Dog 93. Oh my God, based God swag and swag nerd beats. Thank you guys so much for the follow. You guys are awesome. You guys rock. Thank you so much for following. That's that. Let's talk about polar. B flat, you've been you've been a chant, man. I've just been like rambling on like a moron. Let's go. Let's go deal with some polar stuff. Uh, okay, so this this is one of the really raw songs. Like one of the songs that I. All right. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> see there are there are racks in this song that I don't even own anymore because I tried out a rack and I. I, I didn't I haven't even bought it yet because I, I can't because I, I I have to wait I have to stop buying racks before I actually do stuff so okay I'm gonna let you know right off the bat this is the newest shit that I have written it is in a really raw form there is not a lot of song here please be gentle uh, and also know that this song is a bit of an experiment because I've written it in an odd time signature. Uh, for those of you who may or may not be musicians, if you come all the way down here and take a look at this, you will see, whoop, that's, hey, massive. Okay, uh, this is written in 7-4, uh, which is uh, basically a shorthand way of saying this shit is written in a very weird rhythm. Uh, and what that basically means is that there's seven beats for every four bar measure. Um, so it's a seven count. Uh, is equal to one uh, bar. Uh, and it's a little weird because it sounds like this. We're going to see how this goes. Be gentle. And the idea is that when it switches to this part, the melody will come in and will switch back to 4-4 four, four, and then go back to 7-4 uh, when we hit the chorus, which is the part that you just heard before it. So it's a little fucking crazy, um, and I like working in weird time signatures because I am kind of a crazy whack-job piano musician that likes weird stuff that's like, 
anything that's you know eleven five. Like I have another song that's in eleven five. Fuck it, I'll just bring it up right now. I, I'm 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 blowing my load here, but you know you guys are, you can get me all excited about all this shit. Um, but the good thing is that you'll see these guys, you'll see these songs uh, morph, uh, hopefully. And then the the cool thing about this song, I've I've named this song Alucard Strikes Back. Yeah, yeah. How about that? You like that name? I like that name. And this one is in eleven. This one's in eleven four. So it's six. It's six four five four. Uh, and this song is in about the same state of not finished yet. I should mention when I'm doing this is because I'm doing that crazy conductor thing. I apologize. That's all I have of that so far. So I guess half of this is me basically showing you what I have up until this point and me making the promise live and on internet television uh, that these are going to get done and this will be an album and you guys will be able to have it soon, soon, I hope, um, and that I will be working on this live here on Twitch TV. Uh with you guys watching, making your input, being creative together, being awesome, enjoying music, games, art, creativity, what have you. This is like the most super exposed my creativity has ever been in a public forum. Uh, these songs have been sitting with me for months and months and months, and I'm putting them out here uh, on this channel that I've had for almost four years now and i'm excited i'm excited to do this and i'm so glad you guys are here tonight and um i will smooth out this whole setup so that i can actually tonight i can't do much writing because unfortunately when i press a key yeah it's it's too delayed for me to actually play because because I can't hear it in time. I'm... If those were if those were on rhythm, I could actually I could actually hit those fast enough, but I can't hit them fast enough to make it work because here's the thing that I I should mention about all of those fast notes. I do quantize what I write, but for the most part, I like to play it, not write it. I don't go in and, and put notes down. I actually play it on this thing because I'm a, a pianist. Um, so if if I have latency in there, I can't actually write. Um, but again, this is the first night we're doing this, so this will get better. There will be improvements in the way that I send it to you guys, that it gets captured by OBS, where the audio works. We've had a whole slew of fucking weirdo problems tonight. Um, you streaming the sound output from Reason with a software driver? I have to use this 
because of the way OBS is 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 capturing audio and the way it's doing things, I have to use Audio Hijack in order to get the audio from Reason into uh, OBS. But that might change because what I'm planning on doing is I might just have to run it through a second computer, which I have and I can do. But for now, this is what I got. And I was hoping that I would be able to do this all from this one computer since OBS does run on a Mac. But mm. have you tried to put a physical cable from the audio interface to another audio interface using for streaming? We have tried that tonight. The only problem that I have with that is that I have... Usually I use this computer that I'm casting on as a secondary computer for my cast where I'm doing the actual cast on my PC, like if I'm playing games on the PC or on the console or what, and having that stream into... I'm going to finish that sentence, but then we have to do a big, big thank you because we passed 1,800 followers tonight, and you guys are fucking amazing. Um, normally, I would use this computer to bring audio in, like the beginning or ending cast music or break music. I would bring use this computer and bring it into the PC. Uh, now that I'm doing everything from the Mac, this is a whole new world of casting because I've never used a Mac to cast a Twitch before. So that's interesting that's completely different sam 16 how are you doing it's good to see you welcome to the channel uh da, 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 da. and thank you guys so much for the 1800 and one followers you guys are awesome let's do some thank yous uh nine bin blackheart official dominic wardle <laughs> very awesome uh, Askarama O2 and M Michael Explode. Michael Explode. Thank you guys so much for the followers. You guys are amazing. Oh my god, we hit 1,801 followers tonight. You guys are so awesome. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. About the time. Well, I'm gonna, yeah. Where's, I mean, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. <laughs> Okay, so, all right. Stop. We had our moment. Let's go back, because I need to, before I completely lose track of what I was doing, before I lost track of what I was doing, let's go and talk about... Yes. Ah, stop. Stop. Stop it. No, back. Okay, to your other left. Back to your other... No, the other... Back to the other... To, to the left, to the left, to the right, to the front, to the front. Okay. Uh, Orphindel. Thank you. Have a fantastic night. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Absolutely, Michael. Thank you so much for the follow. You made my night because you're awesome. Okay. So Polar is a incredibly, incredibly awesome device. Okay. I'll stay. Oh my god, you were going to go to sleep. I, uh, you, uh, I'll, I'll do this quick so you don't have to stay on too long. I, I, you asked me this question like 40 years ago. Like At this point, I should just like, for, just for the sheer fact that you hung around and you're awesome, I should just make you a mod and like get it done with. Because uh, you just put up with my shit all night long. Be flat, you're awesome. You can stay. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's let's focus on Polar for just a second because this 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 device is actually really awesome. I'm going to turn Polar off so you guys can see what's going on here. Now, here's a, an interesting thing about this this song. Um, I tried something weird with this particular instrument that Polar is hook, hooked up to. As you'll see here, we have actually two synthesizers hooked up to one another. So we have a grain table synthesizer known as the Maelstrom. Now, the thing that's interesting about the Maelstrom is that, again, it's a it's grain table synthesis. So if I remember correctly, the thing about grain table synthesis is that the oscillators are modified by waveforms, not your standard attack, decay, sustain, release faders, so your ADSRs. So what you have here is you have two oscillators, I can, I'll zoom in on this, 
you have your two oscillators and they're going into and the thing that's that's interesting about this is you've got arrows pointing to where everything should go uh and what happens is, is you've got these two sounds being modulated by a sawtooth wave and a sine wave um and all of those sounds are going into the shaper into the filter and out to the volume slider and so we have this if we just isolate um the sound by itself which unfortunately there's no easy way to do that we have to go how is the sound routed right now let's see so we have it going maelstrom to thor to polar um so the idea here is is that we have a raw sound from maelstrom going into the thor poly uh, polysonic synthesizer now thor is great because you can essentially use thor as a gigantic fucking filter they won't tell you this when you have the um device but thor is a multi oscillator synthesizer that basically uses three oscillators and those oscillators are fully dependent on the type of oscillate uh, like the the sound that you get out of each oscillator is dependent upon the synthesizer that you put in the oscillator that's what's so fucking crazy about thor is that you can put in an analog synthesizer you can put in a wavetable synthesizer you can put in a phase modulation synthesizer uh which is um i gotta remember what that what that is i haven't used it in so long oh right yes it's it's basically it's a pair of different um waveforms that you can then tune and uh make different levels of the basically how you blend those sounds together so you can take like um you could take a square wave and like a random wave and blend them together it's fucking insane what you can do here you can do an fm pair which is i have two fm pairs above it which is basically fm synth fm synthesis like the native instruments fm7 and you're basically routing uh um to fm waves through different uh sound paths to create different soundscapes it's insane and then there's a multi oscillator which is basically a bunch of analog oscillators put together in different patterns and detune modes that you can go into and step into and how much you want that detune to be and then just your straight up noise oscillator the F I like the FM7, but I never have enough instances to use it. That's that's the problem I have with the FM7. The FM7 is great synthesizer, and I never find myself using it. I should use it more. Um, uh, reason was pure love. I just stopped using it because VST is a long time ago. Airfindel, I totally understand. That's one of the things that... It, is it worth coming back to again? I think so. Uh, it's my primary basis for music. Uh, writing at least for like I've done a lot of electronic music with it I haven't done as much uh, like piano and vocals music writing with it which I want to try to get into um, I own Omnisphere I own Massive I own Reactor I'm planning on getting more native instruments VSTs and external VSTs it bugs me that I can't use those in Reason but if you could use those in Reason it would not be Reason anymore and there's just so much stuff you can do with reason by itself. It's, I would say try it. I mean, I've told a lot of my audio engineer friends who are way more knowledgeable about this shit than I am that they should check out reason again because reason is about the best that it has ever been. Um, okay, but getting back to this this patch here. So I have this. Let me see if I'm actually selected on it. And again. Please feel free to correct me if I am wrong with something here, or if I am doing, if I am talking about something incorrectly, because I am, I have been doing this stuff for like four or five years. I've had reason for longer, and I, even I, I am not an expert on this shit. I, I am just about knowledgeable enough to talk about it. Um, so I might get one, I might get an occasional thing wrong once or what, once in a while. Uh, you can play record them into Reason via the MIDI instrument. Yes, you can do that. You can use them externally, but you can't. 
you can control them via MIDI but and then record the audio in, but you can't actually use them inside reason is the is the thing. Um what was I saying? Yes, I wanted to make sure I had this uh isolated. So let's go back to the rack. This is the wobble underscore. Uh wobble underscore. So I believe it's this. Okay. So if we go back to the rack and we um Turn off. We bypass. Okay, so. Now, here's here's the funny thing about polar. Polar can be as um as simple or as complex as you want to use it. And the okay, all right. This was the thing I forgot to mention. So the main sound from the patch is coming through this and being filtered through Thor and then being amplified by this set of um, FM pair oscillators that are being routed one th they're both being routed through uh, state variable filters uh, low pass uh, 12 dB uh, and then being routed through to the polar now here is the sound with polar turned off Now, here's the sound with Polar turned on. Here's why I like Polar. Basically, all that Polar is doing is you're sending the audio through this algorithm. It goes into this algorithm... Uh, it's not a generator, but it's basically, it's, it's an algorithm. It's kind of like a tunnel that the sound's going through and it's being reinterpreted in a couple of different ways. Basically, it's not, it's not really a bit cruncher, but it's making, it's, it's reducing the sound somewhat. And whatever is coming through that, when it's being resampled by this algorithm generator, is then going into what I like to call basically the playground of polar which is you have a delay buffer which is one of my favorite things in polar So all I'm doing here is I have a sound that's been locked in place by Polar, and the delay of where that audio has stopped, I am shifting using the delay feature here. And then I have an LFO sweeping it back and forth within the delay. And if I want to even increase that delay more, I put on the 4X delay, and it slows down that lock even more and allows me to sweep through the sound. And then the other thing that is really cool that you can do here is, again, I said these algorithms basically reinterpret the sound as it's going through it with a mathematical algorithm. See how it sounded even crunchier now that I went to slow? Orphandel, have a good night, man.
So now I'm taking that sound that I have made this weird cacophonic nonsense that doesn't sound like anything except this weird sort of bit crunched sound. And I have these two shifters. I'm going to stop this. So basically, you don't have to hear that over and over and over again. So you can lock the sound. You can sweep through the sound. You can use a low-frequency oscillator to basically go back and forth over that sound and then use the envelope generator to determine how far that sound goes. You can take the two pitch shifters, sweep them back and forth independently. So you can basically... You can use you can use them pan left right. You can you can sum them. You can do that in the delay buffer. You can take the whole sound and auto pan it using the auto pan rate. So like okay, so if we go back, so I'm gonna take the whole thing and auto pan it. Yeah, for this would be fucking ridiculous on vocals. I haven't tried it on vocals yet. All right, so... And you can actually... Oh, shit, I'm pressing the wrong thing. You can play sound through it. I think, actually... I believe you can even... If you activate keyboard input, this button down here, you can actually... M f tweak the sound using your MIDI keyboard to affect the sound. I'm not 100% sure on that, but... Okay, so if we sum the audio... So we're gonna, we're gonna center pan both of these. And then we can filter it within Polar. So we can do low pass, band pass, high pass, combi pass. It's like, it, there's, there's a ridiculous amount of options that you can use. I'm not, sh I do not know if the Resonance in the in the filter section of Polar is self oscillating though. That's the only thing I don't really know very well. And then also you have a, a, an envelope gate, so you can you can determine when Polar activates. I actually need to reset all this now because I've completely fucked this. So let me restart this program. Don't let me re let me reopen this. Um, where is it? It's all card strikes back. Shut up. Um, just because I fucked with that so much. So you have an envelope uh, which you can actually set to how, you know, when you want the polar to activate, decay, the sustain, the release, all those things. You can turn it on, you can turn it off. It's, there are a lot of, there, there are a lot of devices in Reason that I think will mimic some of the things you can do in polar, but the delay buffer is something that you can't get on any other device in reason that I found. And it really, the, the other thing that I like about it is that you can seriously fatten up sounds, like just the difference between how this sounds without it and with it. Sonically, it just fills the space a whole lot more. And even if you do some mix work like post-processing work after you've written the song together, I just love the way it sounds. In it on on like I I I am getting to the point where I automatically put it on devices. <laughs> Wall of sound of. I can 
not have multiple songs open at once because they start to sound crunchy. Ah, so yeah, so I mean, is polar necessary for your music writing? I mean, maybe not necessarily. It it all depends on if you're looking for that ability to be able to take a sound and sort of like, um, let me, let me, I'll open up one last song. And I think this will probably be the last song that I, that I open up for the evening because I'll probably have to call it a cast after this, but you guys have been awesome. Thank you so much. Hopefully the next time I'll actually be able to write some music live on the cast, which is where I'd like to take a next, take some of these songs and actually bring them across the finish line on the cast, which should be fun. Um, but let me open up. 